Her name is Mijan Dabrisil. She is a nurse by training and also the president of Asian Association in Sacramento. Uh, I have to add, she is a one of the rising stars of the Asian community of California and also of the diaspora. Miss Dabrisi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, uh, could you please tell me about uh, your childhood, your hometown, and the reason that motivated you to study nursing or to embrace a professional career in nursing? Okay, my child, uh, I raised and born in Haiti. I was born and raised in Haiti. Um, I came here in late uh, 1999. My mom brought us here. Um, my childhood, like, we, I raised with uh, seven siblings, and I am the fifth one. And two of my brothers were doctors, and I have one actually right now is one of the judge in Haiti and I ha actually two of them are judges uh, in Haiti and so I was kind of really oriented in that area is either I choose to be a lawyer or I choose to be a doctor or somewhere in the medical field but when I came here in the US so uh, I, I directed myself towards the uh, to be a lawyer so i did my first degree in criminal justice so i was trying to apply for law school in the meantime it was not quite easy in florida so i decided i started working as the probation officer detention officer then i was like no this is not me i want something more so I was more caring and I, I think I was not helping much as much as I wanted to. So I decided to change my career. So I went to nursing. So this is my childhood. I don't know if I answered the questions correctly. Yeah, but you know the area in Haiti. I was born and raised in uh, Carrefour. In Haiti, Port au Prince area, like, I don't know if you know Carrefour. Yes. Uh, I was staying in two different places. I was staying in La Monte Second Cat and also in Mobile Cat. So th th these are the two places I have stayed until I moved here to the US. When I came here, I was in Florida. I did most of my time in Florida. Then I moved to Boston in 2008. But the weather, didn't like me too much, so I went back to Florida for another two years. Then I moved here to California. So it's been two years since I've been here in California. Okay, please, uh, uh, could you share with us uh, your dream for the future? My dream for the pick for the future, I have. I uh, also my number one priority is to empower young people to reach the destiny and also it's to re-establish um re-establish uh health access in haiti that is my dream to have a hospital where every haitian citizen have access to health regardless if they have a uh, uh, financial support or not but they can receive at least the basic needs of health in Haiti. That is my biggest dream. Of course, uh, I have other dreams. Uh, one day, maybe meet the white men and get married and have children. 
Okay. Okay. I know that. Okay. <laughs> if, 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 if I understand it, as an impossible man, you have a good project for it. Yes. Yeah. As a profession, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, if I understand, you have a little a a good project for it. Yes, definitely. But uh, what are the challenges and the problems you face as a nurse of a, of an ethnic group in California? Oh, when I first came here, it was very challenging because we don't have much Haitian nurses here. I only, I on, so far, I only met two face to face, and I know two other ones that we speak on WhatsApp because we communicate through Facebook, and we don't have much here, especially in Sacramento. Maybe we have a few more in Los Angeles because I have a few friends as well and as nurses in LA, but in Sacramento area, I believe it's only five of us. It's myself, my sister, and my other friends that I just mentioned. Yeah. And uh, that was number one uh, challenges because we have, we have not too many here. And also, you know, when you, the people never pick me as Asian, because they can they can nurse an accent, uh, but they could they always confuse me with other nations, either Dominican Republic or Jamaican, any other nations. But they never be Haiti. I do not know why. And and second challenge is I will say you know there's a lot of uh, now it's more mixture. Uh, they have a lot of you know white Caucasian people here and Asian, Indian, it's really mixed, but when you don't have that much support of AD, it's just like, you really walking along like in a hospital, I'm the only Asian. So it's just, you know, but I do my best to provide the best care to my patients and make an impact, a positive impact in their lives and be a support to my co-workers. Doesn't matter where you're from. This is who I am. Could you share with us some experiences as a nurse? Could you share with us some experiences in your personal career as a nurse? I am in school right now to go in for further for to study NP. It's either I am orienting uh, because my background is critical care. I'm an IC nurse. Uh, can you, uh, originally, can you repeat again for me your your career is what? Uh, my, my background in my background in nursing. Mm -hmm. It's critical care. I'm an ICU nurse, which is intensive care unit. So I only deal with the really serious critical ill patients. So um, I was uh, directed myself to anesthesia. So to be a nurse and uh, uh, to be an anesthesiologist nurse. But however, I, I think I am. I am 50/50 with a nurse practitioner right now. So I am. I don't know yet, but I should be finished my bachelor's pretty soon. Then I will decide for my master's which one I will get myself with. Ah, okay. Uh, it's, it's really yeah. good. Yeah. But uh, as in a, a practitioner, you will make more money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it depends where you work in California. California is not really, you don't really make more money as in a practitioner. Uh, but however, yeah, it will be a good, it will be a plus because I will not be at the bedside. So I just want to go and see the patients and do what I have to do and get out. But it's harder when you bedside nurse that you have to constantly provide care. So it's harder. But this is why I'm shift, I, I'm shifting to a nurse practitioner or an assistant. You understand you have a little dreams. You have a um, little dreams. You have a little yes, dreams. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But I heard uh, you live uh, before in Orlando. Could you please uh, make a difference for us between the work conditions for nurses of Orlando and those in California? Oh my God. I mean, the difference is so huge and oh my God, it is very huge. Um, I 
I will say here uh, for nurses, uh, working conditions is quite way better. Um, here in California, it is a law to have a ratio. Like they're not supposed to give you uh, uh, they count the acuity care of the patients because patients really come here first. So they need you to provide the excellent, the best care possible for your patients. So they really look at what you have to do for your patients during your share. If like me, uh, it's one to two uh, patients uh, in critical care. Sometimes it depends on what's going on with the patients. If I have so many things going on, I may have only one patient. And if my patients are stable, I may have two. Uh, in Florida, it's quite different. It doesn't matter the acuity. They don't have a ratio. Uh, as long as they have a body nurse there, they just throw you patients and it just, it's hard. It's really hard to provide the care that you really need to provide to a patient. But it's, I mean, it's not a law. I mean, they can give you up to three patients in ICU and sometimes all of them might be very critical ill patients and you know if you're in in Florida you have to have a body like a system like a crew that you work with somebody that can watch out for you to look out for your patient when you're in a room with a patient because it depends what's going on with your patients Florida I have never worked in Florida that I have one patient that's never happened so a minimum always two but they always when I was the last job I have in Florida, I always, for the last few weeks, this is why I make the decisions to move somewhere else, to check around, to see how the other side look like. It's because for the last few months before I left, I had three patients constantly every day and like very critical ill patients. And I felt like I was not providing the care that they needed. So I had to go. But the, uh, the, the opportunities are the same. I know, I'm sure life in California is more in expensive uh, than uh, Orlando. Uh, what is the salary? Oh, the salary, I mean, I think it's bounced out. It is way expensive, but also they pay you way more than Florida. And when I was, anyway, I, I think it's even more because when I used to be in Florida, I had to work two jobs to maintain my bills. It doesn't matter. So I have to work two jobs. So, I mean, it was not two full-time, it was a full-time and a PRN, which is as needed somewhere else. So I had to pick up chef in order for me to, you know, I could pay my job in one day, but if I need to travel to do extra, it was not gonna be possible. So I had to have an extra income coming. But here I can do anything I want with one job. So I think I'm doing okay. okay. With one job, you can do everything. Yes. But uh, maybe soon uh, you will have two jobs because when you when you have a when you have a husband is a second job. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. When I have him, I will have a second job. A second job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 I know you are really a Christian too. Uh, you are a Christian and a hard worker. Uh, could you please tell us? Oh, to continue to trust God when your dreams are working out. I mean, God is my source of life. I can I can live without Him, and I am glad that the day He lay hands on me and I have confessed that He is the Lord, and I accepted that and since that day, I I, I mean, it's the best ever decisions I ever made. Yeah, when my dreams comes, I mean, comes out. It's, I mean, until I take my last breath, is to praise Him and worship Him and witness Him to others that, that in the next generation that's coming to empower them to know what God has in store for them so they can partake in it. Because people are living out there days to days, they don't know what's really in the packages, what God has put together for them, and they're not they're not really living as a princess or a princess on earth and God created us to live as such and if you don't study the the word and I mean you're out of um you're out of um you have no substance no substance to you cannot live just day by day and just 
die. You have to know where you die, where you're going, what you're working for. Are you working for eternal life? Uh, what are you working for? What are you, I mean, are you calling, are you helping other people to serve the Lord? What are you doing with your girl? Spiritual life. It's just like when you have a natural life, you have to go to work, you have to do everything else, but it's the same thing with your spiritual. You have to feed them through the Word of God. You have to remain communicate with the Word of God. And you also have to witness the God to other people. Yes. That's yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, could you please uh, give us a, a brief profile of the community of Sacramento? A uh, picture of Sacramento, uh, I would say is the uh, I would I would say that we have a lot of uh, Indian people. We have a lot of um, uh, uh, the Asian people. I would say it's about maybe thirty five or forty percent of white people, and the rest is among uh, Mexican people. We have a lot of them too. Uh, especially in this area where I'm living, we have a lot of them. But the Haitian population is really minimum. And the last uh, research that we did was um, was on um, March. Well, it was only 190 to 200 people, including children and parents. So we don't have much Haitian in this area. You don't have any of Haitian with No, we don't. Uh, how do you use uh, your position uh, uh, as a president of the Asian community of Sacramento to move the Asian community in the right uh, direction? Uh, I moved here when I found this group. I was excited because, I mean, Haitian was like nowhere to be found. So when someone invited me, there's a Haitian group that meetings in a prior today, do you want to go? I said, yeah, of course I want to go. So when I went there, I liked the, the atmosphere. So I joined the group and then we we started. It was not really a formal uh, group yet. It's after I joined them and we created, uh, we established a, a committee and uh, I was uh, selected at first for the secretary down the road. I carry the 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 every um charges. I did everything that I, that needs to that support needs to be done. And it was just like I was the head in out of the blue, and they nominated me to be the president of the group. Yeah. Uh, could you give us uh, some priorities if if uh, 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 of the Association of Asian Community of Sacramento for the year 2019 to, to, to 2020? Uh, our plan, um, and as, we, as we always do, our plan is to celebrate uh, our uh, Flag Day, January 1st. We always, I mean, not a Flag Day, the Independence Day. And we, uh, last year, we had a lot of other nations, Jamaican and Africa, and we have a lot of them too around here that came and assisted us because, you know, we, it's not much of us. So the little group, we usually get together. We always, we usually join them too in their own activities. So, uh, and next plan is to celebrate our uh, anniversary. It was supposed to be done today, but because of venue situations and the date was not work out for work too well for us. So we are planning ahead this year so we can have it done next year by September. And the third event uh, we're gonna have is to have uh, is to have a picnic as a family. So we're planning on and that as well to go to an area called Lekaho. Those are the three big plans that we have to get things done. They say are coming. Yeah, the plan is to get us um, legally established with everything and educate the new generation, especially the ones that are born here, um, about our culture because 
and other people and, and anyone would love to know about us because people usually treated us as the poorest country and the most educated people they don't really know that there are some Haitians that are really educated and we do have a culture and we are good people as well so this is why we want to we want to uh, group up together ourselves together to educate not only the new generation that comes but uh, the surrounding who we are where we come from and what is Haiti is about because people always always when we and that frustrates me and which is kind of some truth sometimes there's a lot of truth about it it's just oh the poorest country oh uh where you in Haiti where you are in dirt it's just they have such a a, a poor picture about Haiti and and it's always an opportunity for me to to educate them about Haiti yes Haiti has some part of it that is poor unfortunately we don't have a strong government and we don't have a uh, the same unity that we used to have and that's brought us out and to give us liberty and now because of the insecurity the most ed educated one are fleeing out they are taking off because there is no there is nothing offered to them so is i'm telling you it's just so frustrating sometimes when people picture aiding and it does it pleases me but hey i have to accept some part of it because they are happening they are making the media but i also take opportunity to educate them and let them know this is not how it is we have some very educated people and i have sometimes i have to put so many pictures online to let them know so and so is a doctor here so and so is a lawyer here so and so is a senator here we have some very educated haitians unfortunately it's just the unity is not there and due to the insecurity so haiti is the way it is but not how haitians are the way you see haitian in your in your picture yeah. in your mind <laughs> yes it's true i, yes, it's true. True. I think if you <laughs> is a big problem you know, for all of us you know yeah. for all of us yes. and everywhere uh, yes i presume as a nurse you are always busy you have a professional career and you are also the president of the Asian community of Sacramento. How do uh, you manage uh, these two, uh, two, uh, uh, two jobs or two tasks or two ministries? I, I, I always been a very uh, extraordinary organizer in my life since I was a little girl. So I manage my time very well. I know my schedule and I know when to meet with, I have to learn how to separate my my schedules and I know where to go to work. I know when to meet with them and when to have some, like some uh, fun time with them and a part two. And also I have to go to church. I have things I'm involved in church and I have another a group of Haitian, not Haitian, but it's Haitian and American that I am called Help Haitian Early Education Learning. So this kind of group, uh, I I join them as well. I am one of the members. We join every second Thursday of the month, and we are putting together to send money to Haiti. And we adopted fifty children to pay schools for them. And those 50, we want to keep them until they go to college and depend one day when they finish high school so we can apply for some of them so they can come here for university and in them with the mind to send them back to develop. Hey, this is our plan for right now for this group. And also, um, yeah, I do what I have to do. That's why I'm always busy. Sometimes when you call me if I'm not at work, I am in a meeting, I am somewhere, or maybe I'm taking a class because I'm always taking extra classes, especially for nursing. I love to keep my sh myself sharp. Um, yeah, this is who I am. I, lo I love to be busy. And to be a critical nurse, you have to be busy all the time. So it's kind of like, it's nothing for me. It's like a, a daily life. But I can understand, but it's not, it's not always easy to do on the phone. <laughs> no, it's not always easy. Uh, 
Um, please tell us of your interaction or your relationship with the Asian Women Youth of California. We don't have much here. The group that I drink so far, the, the younger youth that we have is between 8 and 14. Those are the children of the members in the group. So we don't have much here, but I mean, with many people coming, we're expecting to have much. Um, people in my age air in my age range, not even much either. So it's just unbalanced for right now because it's not much of us, and we not all of us meet because sometimes when I go to a grocery store, I met a Haitian, I gave them my card, my number, I invited them to the group. Some come, some don't. You know, it's just. It's just hard right now, but we are working to establish uh, among us the community, the the community that we have. We, I have a very good relationship with them. Um, I we communicate very well. We get along very well. We have fun together, and it's just awesome. But the age range is just unbalanced for right now. Okay, okay. and your opinion. <laughs> Do you think Asian women know the value, the impact they make in our society? You mean uh, Asian? Yes, Go Asian women. Oh yeah, oh my god, we are the bomb. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, I, can t I can take myself as a reference. Uh, I'm, I'm not only providing care to patients with kindness and uh, with sincerity and compassion and respect, but um, I do I do make an impact on every patient that I have encountered with, and some of them come back and with cards says that you are an angel to me, and I have nothing to say but thank you. Uh, if there's another word, one of them told me, if there's another word that is greater than thank you, this is exactly what I express. Because certain times, is some patient came to the hospital, they don't have um, a medical issues. It's just sometimes it's just stress, anxiety issues that, that uh, that execute or that's changing the the thing that they are sick but they are not sick but when you sit down and talk to them and you find out what's going on with them it's easier to find out and get help and get them out of the hospital get the one that needs to be in a hospital so that's one thing that as Asian women I think I can do uh, another thing that we are uh, I would say for me um, uh, Asian ones are very particular in their own ways. They are faithful to their men, and they are respectful. Um, they they um, a lot of them now are very educated. So I met a lot of them uh, on Facebook. I see a lot of Asians going, especially the women. They go to school. They are getting their degrees done. They, I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, among my sisters only, I have uh, like four of us are nurses, and I have one in getting PA school, and the other one have a doctorate in physical therapy. So, and all of us have friends, Haitians, and we are in a, our surroundings are very educated women. It's just, we get in there. I mean, we are bringing a big impact to show people that we're not the person that they think we are, we can do better, and we are looking to go further to um, to represent Haiti, to bring the old picture of Haiti back to 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 the world. Like this is not who we are. We do have a background. We do have a culture. We can do better, and we are looking towards it and to do better. And I think we are. Um, Asians, uh, women are doing very well. They have great mothers. I have a great one. Um, I mean, we never give up. We always push forward. And this is one of our like a backbones of Haitians. We don't give up. We always go forward, no matter what. And I mean, we might have some bumps, but hey, we keep going. So this is who we are. 
and we are in our two others, Caucasian women is always is always a single mother for the husband too. <laughs> That's true, and we know how to cook. That's the thing, right? And that I remember when I was raising up in Haiti. That's one thing my grandma made sure we do is not to cook, have to wash our clothes, or to clean the house. She always says, "No matter what, make sure your husband got a hot tray on the table and make sure the house is clean. It will not go anywhere." So I guess I have learned that, and I'm glad I do. And I mean. We are all, I mean, we got it all, you know, whole package. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> and we like to feed the, the, the children and the husband. I'm sorry? We like to feed the children and the husband. Yes, yeah. but the new generation though kind of do it a little bit different well, because you know with more education we're trying to feed ourselves and the people around us with more um, healthy food now. So it's just that we don't, we, I mean, I don't know about everybody, but here in my family, we don't only go straight to Haitian food because we know our food carry a lot of fat. <laughs> now we, we switch around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we mix it up. Do you have a summit, a summit advice for Haitian women students who want to embrace a, a, a professional career in a nursing or to study nursing? Nursing, you have to be born to be a nurse because nursing is hard. Not only to study, study requires a lot of time, a lot of demands, uh, a lot of determination. It's, it's a very hard course. But I tell you, if you do it, it is worth it. And you have to have a heart to do it because don't just look at the money. The money is good, it's great, it's awesome. But at the end of the day, you want to put an impact on someone when that person really needs you. And I remember there was a day I had a, I have a patient that brought to me and I see you. And when the patients come to me and I just look at the stomach and I say, well, this patient has not have a bowel movement. So I asked her, when was the last time you have a bowel movement? She said, 15 days ago. So I have to deliver that patient, otherwise she will pass out. So I had to do what I had to do as a nurse. I told, I called the doctor. I said, I said a lot of prescriptions. But what I really need is this, is this, is this. The patient needs to be evacuated right now. I need to give her an I need to do what I have to do. I have to put a, 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 a nasal gastric tube for to suction those things out of her because she is impacted. So it depends. You have to you have to be ready to do any kind of drugs with nursing. And not everybody want to deal with this. Not everybody want to deal with bowel movement. Not everybody want to deal with spinal. Not everybody want to deal with vomiting. I know nursing is great, is awesome. But as long as you you know you have the system to tolerate those kind of uh, activities, hey, welcome. And if you have determination, so you have a heart for it, and if you love it, you are welcome to come and. We need a lot of a lot of more nurses. Definitely, we do. But we need the ones that have the hearts to do it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Dabrizil, uh, for agreeing to answer my question. Uh, uh, my question. I have to add, uh, Mrs. Uh, Dabrizil is a one one of the impressive impressive women in California. She is a nurse, and she is also the president of the 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 Association of Asian Community of Sacramento. And I'm very happy to have her today. Okay, thank you so much. Not a problem. Oh, 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 Haiti, 
merci, merci, oh Haïti, merci, merci, oh Haïti, merci. Naïti nous yo, congé pour gas, lui tête dans bayou. Faut le faire simplement, pour faire moucher, ça c'est trop pas d'or. Vous savez, tu fais ce que Haïti fait vite, c'est des factories. Oh Haïti, merci, merci, oh Haïti, merci, merci, oh Haïti, merci.